homework time. Yes, happy, happy homework time is here once again. Let's jump right into lesson 13 by jotting our names down at the top of the paper. I'll put my name and how, how's about you put yours. And then let's write today's date. I'll write today. You write the actual date where and when you are in this world of ours. Our instructions in number one are to classify each triangle by its side lengths and angle measurements. Just circle the correct names. All right, we can do this. When we look at this triangle A, you see this little square in the corner. That means that's a right angle, right? 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 Okay, so let's go for that first. That's the big glaring obvious thing about this one. When we look at the three sides, and of course we're going to have to make assumptions here because uh, with the exception of C and D, the sides really aren't labeled. But we can look at these three sides and say, uh, yes, they are three different lengths. So equilateral, equal sides. All three sides would be equal. Isosceles means that two of the sides are of equal length. This, however, of course, is scaling because all three are a different length. So this is right and scaling. When we look at B, look at the three sides again carefully. This one. This one, this one, equilateral, isosceles, scaling. Yes, again, it is scaling. And when we look at the angles, we see that we do have this one here, which is obtuse. Yes, that's greater than a right angle. So that means we would classify this as an obtuse triangle. Of course, you can't have more than one of them, one of the three angles be obtuse. So um, if one of them is, then it's an obtuse triangle. All right, and then in C, those little hash marks there, those tick marks, those mean that these sides are equal. So we don't have to just eye it anymore. These little marks say, hey, these two sides are equal. And as I already mentioned, when we have two sides that are equal, that is isosceles. So go ahead and say it, isosceles. And notice the SC you can maybe remember that because it's like in science, the word science. You have an S sound spelled S-C, science, isosceles. Now when we look at the angles here, no right angles to be had, right? Um, no obtuse angles either. All three angles are less than 90 degrees. They're all, yes, acute. So by angle measurement, we'd call this triangle acute. And you notice on D, all three sides have the hash marks, which means, hey, this is an equilateral. Yes, all three sides are equal. And in an equilateral triangle, you will find that they are always going to be, right, acute. That it's going to look at all three angles, all less than 90 degrees, so it's acute. And kind of by definition, it has to be wonderful. Look at it, we just blow right through that. Let's keep blowing on, I guess. Whatever. Oh, I really like these two because they make you think about the geometry instead of just classifying and definitions. So triangle ABC, and that, of course, the little triangle is the symbol for, you got it, triangle, has one line of symmetry as shown and in the past, they had been making these dashed lines, but this line descending from point B is our line of symmetry. Is the measure of angle A greater than, less than, or equal to angle C? Okay, if this is a line of symmetry, right? This is a line of symmetry. That means that angles A and C must be Equal. Yes, we could also surmise that line segments AB and BC are of equal length and that this is what kind of triangle? Isosceles and obtuse, yes. But uh, regarding the angles, they must be equal because this is, by definition, a line of symmetry. Okay, all right. So, um, so we're going to use kind of the geometric talk here. So given is a word that we use in geometry to mean that something's been defined. So given uh, the symmetry of triangle ABC, comma, then angle A 
must be equal to angle C. And we could go on, but it, you know, state the, the inverse as well would be true that if, if they were not equal, then this would not be a line of symmetry. And they are liars then. Okay, so if, in order for, those, for that to be a line of symmetry, angle C must be uh, equal to angle A. All right, so now we go to a, uh, triangle DEF, and it's scalene. So scalene, again, means that all three sides have different lengths. There are no two or three equal sides. What do you observe about its angles? Explain. Okay, well, so let's start at the, uh, well, we'll go alphabetically. Angle D is... Well, it's acute, right? What else could we say about it? I don't know. It's about it, really. I can't think of anything else. Angle D is acute, comma. Angle E is obtuse. And angle F is acute. I don't know how much more we could say about this. Um, I mean, there, there are certain things we could surmise from it, uh, like that, uh, given that it's a scaling triangle and such, but, but it's, the question is, what do you observe about its angles? Um, say the sum of the angles is 180 degrees, which is true of all triangles, though. So um, I don't know what else we could write there. If you got anything, write it out. That's all I got for you. Moving on. All right, number three instructs us to use a ruler to connect points to form two other triangles. Use each point only once. None of the triangles may overlap. Two points will be unused. Name and classify the three triangles below. And yeah, there are times where you just are not expected to be all that creative here. Um, so what they're basically saying with these structures is like, don't do anything funky. Like, you know, we're kind of leading you to do this. Because look, right here, if we make A to B, A to D. Let me see if I can move that, get it more on D. Ugh! Oh my goodness, that was painful. All right, here we go. And now I'll connect B to D. All right, if we look at these three sides, you can see they cross through the intersections of the grid. One, two, right? You see how it looks here? So this pretty well appears to be an equilateral triangle. Okay, so let's let's take care of this one. Uh, I mean, I, I can't uh, really prove it as much, but it appears to be, and that's what we're going at, uh, is by appearances here. So uh, triangle ABD is equilateral. And by angle measurement, look at all three angles. Yes, they are acute. All right, and now the one that they gave us, I, J, K, if you look at the three side lengths, it by all appearances is scaling, yes, all three are different. And do we have one angle that is, yes, greater than a right angle? Okay, so this would be obtuse. And now for the, uh, the next one, Again, they're not looking for us to get creative with this. Um, it's, it's pretty apparent they want us to go with EFG because that will give us the other type of, uh, of triangle. See, we do have some choice in the matter here, but not really. Okay. And so, again, we're, we're going by appearances, not so much by definition, but we could see that this is meant to be a right angle, and I'll even draw that in there. That's meant to be a right angle. So we have triangle EFG. And so it is a right triangle. 
Now, if you look at the size by all appearances, again, it is scalene. Oops, I did that backwards. <laughs> I'm not going to redo this whole thing. There we go. How's that? Reverse those. <laughs> all right, let's move on. All right, four, five, six are asking us questions to answer. So let's dive right in and finish out homework time here. If the perimeter, I mean, that's the distance around, right? Measuring the distance around any figure, not just, we did a lot before with uh, squares and rectangles, but perimeter is the distance around any figure, of an equilateral triangle is 15 centimeters. So that's the whole way around. What is the length of each side? Well, we know uh, triangles have three sides, and an equilateral triangle, in fact, has three equal sides. So if we were to take that 15 and divide it amongst the three sides, divide it by three, you got it, yes. Each side would be five centimeters. So, but let's actually write a, a simple statement explaining that rather than just writing five. Okay, let's, let's be a little more sophisticated than that. Um, so each side would measure, so again, 15 centimeters divided amongst three sides is 5 centimeters per side, 5, 10, 15. We all see that. Okay, good. Would measure 5 centimeters because 15 centimeters divided by three sides equals five centimeters per side. And I could write all that out in words, but using the mathematical notation explains it just as well. All right, can a triangle have more than one obtuse angle? explain. Okay, so if you try drawing this, okay, so if you just draw even an angle that is mildly obtuse, and then you notice right away you have to connect these two sides to have a triangle, to have three sides. So if you were to, uh, so, and, and end up with two acute angles, right, if you try to draw even a, a, a right angle is not going to work here, but if you tried to do anything else, but if I tried to make another obtuse angle, I, I mean, I'm looking at a quadrilateral at best right here, okay? So, so uh, this kind of illustrates like, okay, I have two obtuse angles here, and it does not work because I'm going to end up with a four-sided figure. Okay, and part of that, part of the reason for that is that in all, tri in all triangles, the sum of the angles is 180 degrees. That's just a definition, part of the definition of a triangle. The sum of all three angles is 180 degrees. So if you have one of those angles that's even just 90 degrees, let alone actually obtuse, we'll say 91 or make the math easier, let's call it 100 degrees, that leaves you with 80 degrees there's no way to split that or even to split 89 degrees and end up with another obtuse angle. It just does not work. So that would be a way that we could explain is in terms of the sum of the angles, okay? Um, so, so given that, and I like using the word given in geometry because that's what you do in geometry. So given that... The sum of the three angles in a triangle is 180 degrees if one angle is greater than 90 degrees, that is to say, if it's obtuse, the remaining um, well, 
we'll say 90 degrees or less, because it's actually true in a right triangle as well, although that's not what we're being asked. The remaining 90 degrees or less split across two angles Comma. Well, both, that's an H, will both be less than 90 degrees, which is to say acute. Okay, see, so now that's kind of a technical explanation um, based on the definition of a triangle. If you put it another way and just said, hey, simply, because I really don't want you just like copying what I wrote. That's not the point here. I want you to learn something. Um, if you said, hey, I try drawing two obtuse angles, and no matter how ever so slightly obtuse I made them, I could not create a triangle. I, I had to create at least a quadrilateral in order to close the figure, which is part of the definition of any polygon. All right, so let's go on to six, final one here. Can a triangle have one obtuse angle and one right angle explain, and see now you see why I explained this in terms of the 180 degrees, this just doesn't work because obtuse means greater than 90 degrees and right angle is 90 degrees. So even just 91 and 90, you're over the 180 degrees you have. In fact, even you can't even have two right angles, right? 90 and 90, that's 180 right there. What are you doing with that third angle? Zero degrees? Nah. Okay. So can a triangle? Uh, no. And by the way, up here, I didn't actually, I, I must apologize, I didn't actually answer the question, can a triangle? I did do the explanation. I could have started this with no comma, given that, which is what I'm doing now. So if you want to go back and amend that, feel free. Can a triangle have one obtuse angle and one right angle? No, because, here's our explanation, one angle equal to 90 degrees and another greater than 90 degrees would, I don't know, be more than? I could say exceed, but, but be more than the total of 180 degrees in the three angles of a triangle. And you could also, as in the last one, explain this by you could simply draw a right angle and then if you, you, you see, you could say, hey, there's no way I can make a triangle here with anything other than two acute angles. If you try to make this, and I can do my best here, like ever so slightly obtuse, you can't connect it. You cannot make a three-sided figure. So another way of explaining this would be to say, you cannot draw a 90 degree angle and anything over a 90 degree angle and create a three-sided figure. You create a triangle. So there are different ways of explaining these. I, I did both these in terms of the 180 degree definition of a triangle, but we could explain it just in a practical way to say, hey, I tried drawing this and there's no way to make it work. You end up with the quadrilateral at least. Well, you've gone and done it again. Congratulations, you've completed another homework time and I will see you again next time. It is once again homework time. Thank you.